Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, members of the committee, for holding this hearing today and for receiving my testimony on the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2016. This morning, I'd like to focus my remarks on the Army's Aviation Restructuring Initiative. As you know, this policy will result in the transfer of the National Guard Apache helicopters to the active component. Army officials have stated that this restructuring is necessary to generate savings and make the remaining aviation fleet more affordable. I have long opposed this plan and for the second year in a row asked, Mr. Chairman, savings at what cost? Since September 11, 2001, the National Guard has repeatedly risen to the occasion. They have answered the call and fought bravely in Iraq and Afghanistan. At the height of these wars, nearly 50 percent of the Army's total force was a mix of reservists and members of the National Guard. The Pennsylvania National Guard alone contributed more than 42,000 individual deployments. They have fought side by side with the active component, all while continuing to achieve their important mission here at home. ARI will have devastating impacts on all that the National Guard has achieved. By stripping the National Guard of its Apache helicopters, the Army is ensuring that the National Guard will be less combat ready and less able to provide operational depth. It will also deprive our nation of an operational reserve for these aircraft, which is essential to the retention and management of talented air crews. This represents a fundamental shift in the nature and the role of the National Guard. It runs counter to the wisdom and preference of many members of Congress and their constituents. This issue is important in Pennsylvania and to the 1st 104th Attack Reconnaissance Battalion in Johnstown. These highly trained airmen and crew played an invaluable aerial support role in Afghanistan where they flew their Apache helicopters and fought alongside the active component. The Army now proposes to replace these Apaches with a smaller number of Black Hawks. This reduction will deprive the National Guard of both highly trained personnel and equipment. It will result in the National Guard being less effective, less combat capable, and less able to heed the call to defend this nation both at home and abroad. I offered similar criticism of ARI last year and joined my colleagues in urging this committee to create the National Commission on the Future of the Army. I also advocated that there should be no transfers or divestment of any Army aircraft, including Apaches, until after the Commission has had sufficient opportunity to, to examine ARI. I applauded the Committee for including those important provisions in the FY15 NDAA, but I was disappointed to see that at the insistence of the Senate, the legislation also contained a glaring exception that allows the Army to transfer up to 48 Apaches prior to the Commission releasing its finding and recommendations. The Commission was established to offer a deliberate approach to addressing force structure issues like ARI. So how does it make any sense to permit the Army to transfer these Apaches before the Commission has done its work? The answer is simple. It doesn't. And we need to put a stop to this before it's too late. Even National Guard Bureau Chief General Frank Grass admits that once these transfers begin, it will be all but impossible to reverse them. For that reason, I respectfully request that the committee include a simple provision in this year's NDAA that prohibits the transfer of any Apaches until the end of fiscal year 2016. This will provide sufficient time for the Commission to release its report, for the Army and the National Guard to respond, and for the Congress to make a reasoned and well-informed decision. I recognize that this committee will be forced to make many difficult decisions over the next month, but this isn't one of them. Providing a temporary freeze on the transfer of Apaches just makes sense and will ensure that irreparable harm is not done to our National Guard without due deliberation. Thank you for the opportunity to address you this morning, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank the gentleman. 